Well, there was some uh, discussion for quite a while. I think they, my father decided that uh, it was a good time for you know him to come to America. Uh, his brothers were here, uh, his sister, my mother's sister was here, so it was probably the right time to do it, they thought. So uh, my father came here in 1947, a year before we did. So around a year after the war ended, the discussion started to take place about coming to America, so he made his, his move, and he did come here in 1947 in November. And uh, Chicago was the site because my mother's sister was here, so that attracted my mother because she used to correspond with her all the time. So um, we, uh, the, he came here, went to work, made a couple of dollars, you know, worked for very, very little money, but lived in my aunt's house, which was good. And then uh, we came here in August of 1948. Uh, my mother, my brother, and I, he made the papers, and uh, we, we got called over. And uh, that was an experience that was really heart-wrenching because of the, uh, the fact that we had to leave our comfort zone, you know, as kids, and we're going so far away. We're leaving all our friends. We're leaving our cousins. We're leaving, uh, you know, the safety zone. And it was kind of traumatic for us, uh, especially when we left and we saw this big bastimento, the big uh, the cruise ship that was going to take us. It was called the Saturnia, I remember. And uh, we got on that thing, you know, and then we were in the ocean for so many days and so forth. And it was, uh, it's like you're leaving your life behind and you don't know where you're going. It's like, uh, I don't know, it, it was quite uh, traumatic, I think. I was almost 12 by then, so I was a little older, so it, it hit me a little harder than my brother, but it was just like leaving everything that you knew and you had to go learn everything new again, so you would have to be reborn somewhere else, you know. And uh, it was tough, but, you know, it turned out to be great at the end, but uh, so... When we get to uh, the United States, the first thing that you see is La Estatua de la Libertad, the Statue of Liberty, which you heard about. And it was so such a scene that you can't even imagine seeing this thing, you know, standing up there. You had seen it, you had heard about it, in, you know, in pictures, but it was just very wonderful to see uh, that, that sight. And then the, the New York uh, land, the, the uh, uh, skyline, I mean, it was, we lived in a town where there was two cars. You know, I mean, there was two automobiles. Then you get to New York and you see all this going on and you don't believe it. You think you're in a different, different world, you know. So good thing that my mother's cousin lived in New Jersey and he came down to meet us because we would have never made it through the, the situation, I don't think, without some guidance. So he uh, got us through customs and then uh, uh, he took us uh, to a hotel, which... You know, it was just extravagant for us to see what the hotel looked like, and uh, we never had seen anything like it. So we slept there for the night. The next day, we were in Grand Central Station. More people than I've ever seen in, in my entire life are walking around you, you know, and you're just in this big ca cavernous building. And, uh, and at that time, uh, the, the thing that struck me the funniest was we had short pants on, you know, because in Italy, every young kid wore short pants. Here, nobody wore short pants at that time. So they're all looking at us and making fun of us, you know, and then we're making some signs at him that my mother was objecting to, and she'd give us a few cracks on the head, you know, and behave and so forth. But uh, we were out of place, you know. But we felt strong in our own person, but we were out of place the way we looked to them, but we thought we were okay. So then we get on the train to Chicago, and we reunite with my dad. I'm sorry. And we reunite with my dad, and then I meet my, uh, my aunt for... You know, I haven't seen for years, and my cousin Lena, and her, uh, P. Pirotti, her husband, my uh, aunt's husband, and we lived in their home for a little while, and the experience was stunning. I have to say, stunning, because here you are, you don't speak the language, you can't communicate with anybody except your immediate family. You go outside, and nobody understands you. You don't, you don't understand anybody, and it's awful. So I went to school, which was awful because I sat there. Now, I had already graduated grammar school, so I was advanced a lot further than the kids in the fourth grade here because I knew arithmetic, I knew the, the, uh, uh, a lot of things, uh, algebra, different things I teach you there. I teach you early there, you know, uh, geography. And uh, so I'm sitting there in this classroom, and I'm like the, you know, I don't understand anything. How awful that is to sit there and not even be able to communicate with anyone and just take up space, just sit there, walk out for lunch, come back after lunch, go home. And that was the scene, and it was just terrible. But that was 
an incentive for me because what I did then, I sat down every night. I would never go out. For almost a year, I never went out except to school and back because I couldn't communicate with anyone. So I sat down and my cousin Lena and, uh, taught me how to speak English. I sat down and I wrote words in these manuscripts. I don't have them anymore. I don't know what happened to them, but I phonetically spell these words. And until I learned to speak the language, I wouldn't go outside. So I spent the whole year almost in, 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 uh, you know, in the house learning how to speak the language. Then after that, everything was real good. I made friends in the neighborhood, and uh, things started to become uh, more normal, you know. But it was traumatic at the beginning.